Ah yes, the good old Nikola versus Tesla debate. The debate that manifested itself back in 2020 when Nikola Motors decided to go public has suddenly slowed down in 2022 as to the surprise of the consensus, Nikola actually started delivering real trucks. Meanwhile, the Tesla Semi, the truck that many thought would be the first electric semi truck in the US, has yet again been delayed now all the way to 2023. But despite this difference in launch time, I'm sure investors still want answers to a very important question. How would the Nikola Trey compare to the Tesla Semi head to head? And that is exactly what I'm going to cover in this video. But before we get into it guys, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So the first thing we want to cover when comparing the Trey to the Tesla Semi is obviously going to be the specifications of the chassis. Now, the Nikola Trey, which is a Class 8 semi truck, right now is only designed for drayage and short haul applications. And as far as I know, that is the same application that the Tesla Semi is also designed for. And no, I'm not going to even bother comparing the hydrogen version of the Trey and the Nikola 2 to the Tesla Semi because that is a completely different realm of technology and the use case is also very different. But as you can see for the Nikola Trey, the main specs that we want to pay attention to right now are obviously the range, the greater ability and the total energy that is on board. And for many of the skeptics that said that you can't trust the numbers that Nikola is giving you, the range of 350 miles has been verified by the TTSI pilot program that Nikola did back in December. And that range is achieved by using a 753 kilowatt hour battery pack on board, which has a total of four different modules. Now, if we want to compare these specs to the Tesla Semi, we do not have that much information regarding the specific powertrain that this thing uses because obviously this thing is nowhere near production just yet. But what we can see is that this truck is going to have two options, either a 300 mile or a 500 mile range. And neither do we have any charging related information as to how the cells will react when put under a significant amount of power. But one of the characteristics that we can compare directly to the Nikola Trey, at least right now, is the expected base price, which is expected to be at around $150,000 for the 300 mile range product. If we move on over to the Nikola Trey, as you can see, the range for this product is expected to be around 350 miles. So naturally, you need to up the price of the Tesla Semi if you really want to compare this apples to apples. And although we don't have specific order data to see how much customers are actually paying for each unit of this truck in their pilot tests and their second quarter deliveries, we have an estimate of around $150,000 to $200,000. But to be completely honest, I don't think these specs are the most important factor that we should be comparing between the Nikola Trey and the Tesla Semi. I think the real thing we need to look at is the time to market and the practicality of the design. And I'm sure you guys already know this, but the Tesla Semi has been consistently delayed ever since its announcement in 2017, which gives a significant advantage to a company like Nikola Motors. Because obviously the first mover advantage is something that customers are going to look very dearly at. And stakeholders want to invest and work with a company that has a lot of miles already on the road with real world customers. Because not only does it help validate Nikola's product and their powertrain, but it also helps them improve future generations of the same product, specifically their fuel cell version of the tray. And if you want to compare in terms of LOIs and pre-orders, the Tesla Semi has around 200 to 300 pre-orders, whereas the Nikola tray has well north of 450. Now, to be completely honest, I would expect a company like Tesla to actually have more pre-orders because of their very big exposure to the EV industry and their massive time in business. But it seems like the delays that this truck is facing in its production are definitely weighing on the trustability that companies are going to have buying this truck. And by the looks of it, it looks like Tesla is still in their alpha testing phase for their Tesla Semi as they delivered their first 15 non-production Tesla Semi trucks to Pepsi back in January. Now this timeline was actually supposed to be by the end of 2021, but it looks like these guys are facing some clear issues with their prototyping phase as they had to push that timeline by one month. 
And as some reporters saw at the Tesla Gigafactory, it seems like these prototypes are now alpha versions of the Tesla Semi, which means that Tesla still has to go through the beta and the gamma versions before they can actually start producing these trucks in 2023. And speaking of 2023, we don't even know which specific quarter is when the production of the Tesla Semi is going to start and where exactly is it going to start out of all the different factories that Tesla has. And speaking of factories, another critical advantage that Nikola could have compared to Tesla is the fact that they have a very big exposure to the European market through their own factory joint venture. You see, Iveco, which is the largest truck maker in Europe, has a joint venture with Nikola where they're going to be co-developing the Nikola tray in one of their repurposed and retooled factories in Ohm, Germany. This factory was actually fully launched back in September 2021, and it has the capacity to produce around 1,000 trucks per year starting 2022. And already we're expected to see 25 Nikola tray BEVs delivered to customers in the port of Hamburg by the end of this year. And why is this that important, you may ask? Well, the European trucking market is expected to be one of the fastest growing electric truck markets across the entire world, because we already know that Europe tends to lead the way in the adoption of consumer EVs, and that is obviously going to translate into the adoption of semi-trucks and medium-duty trucks. As you can see, the market in total tripled in 2021 for EV semi-trucks, and even though Volvo currently leads the charge, there is still a big market up for grabs for a company like Nikola, especially with their hydrogen project. Because neither does Volvo or any one of these other big semi-truck manufacturers like Daimler have any sort of hydrogen fuel cell powered semi-truck coming to the market within the next couple of years. Whereas the Nikola Trey FCEV is expected to be launched in the US at least by the summer of 2023, which could mean we could start seeing production units of that vehicle in Germany starting the end of next year. But regardless, I think apart from just the timeline, there is actually a bigger issue with the Tesla Semi that could give Nikola an even bigger edge with the product. And that has to do with the design of the chassis itself. You see, if Tesla actually decides to go ahead with this center seated driving position, I don't think that this truck will appeal that much to drivers and fleets across the country. And the reason for that is that truckers don't really like to change their way of operation. And in this kind of truck, there could be a lot of visibility problems, especially since you're going to have three potential seats, two on the sides of the specific driver position. And this is actually something that people said about Nikola's cab over design for the tray, which is very much detested by some drivers in the US. There's still a lot of data that we need to understand about the Tesla Semi, so this comparison really isn't going to be that important just yet. But regardless, I think it was quite an interesting take to really compare these two products head on. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.